So now that I have some decent screen recording software, I'm just mad with power wanting to record tutorials. So I figured I would just start at the beginning with some of the most basic stuff. And so what I want to show you is actually why I love the layer manager so much by showing a couple of the features that it's got that I see season three artists fighting with all the time instead of just letting the layer manager make their lives easier. Um, and so to demonstrate those exact features, uh, I'm going to do one of the most basic things that uh, you do a lot of times when you're starting a new asset, which is setting up image planes. All right. So we're just going to reset max to everything, default, nice and clean here. Don't need to save this. Yes, I really want to reset. All right. And so this is just, you know, the basic setup when you fire it up. So I'm going to go over to the left hand view here. And um, I have a piece of art. It's actually a photograph that I just grabbed off the internet and that I am going to drop in there. All right. So this is the photo as downloaded from the internet and I took it into Photoshop and just straightened it. Um, I brought down some guides so that this is a nice horizontal line so I can drop in basic shapes like boxes and cylinders as I start the model as I'm blocking it out just to make my own life easier. All right. So I'm taking note of the oops, then I want to take note of the dimensions here. It's 1699 by 1266 and I'm just going to drop a plane into the viewport here. All right. So I'm going to divide the size by 10 just so that it fits a little bit more so that's 169.9 and 126.6. All right, great times. So uh, we're going to go ahead and um, just center this guy. So I've got the hotkey S toggling my grid snaps on and off. Pro tip, you can just hold down shift and right click to change what your snaps are. Like if you suddenly don't want it to snap to verts or you want to toggle grid points on and off, it's just hold down shift and right click and then pick what you want. And bow. anyways, so S toggles them on and off. I'm going to just center this in the scene. All right, super great. Now, for demonstration purposes, I'm actually going to drag out a copy of that thing. All right, and I'm going to name this one uh, just image one. And then this guy over here, which is going to be the one we're doing our magic on, is going to be image two. All right, so now we've got a plane in there to toss the photo on to model from. we got to apply the material. You can just hit M to bring up the fancy slate material editor. Uh, right click materials. I'm going to go standard, standard. I almost wish that standard was just like the default. Anyways, so I didn't have to say standard twice. Like if I wanted not a standard, standard, I could go standard and then have it dropped. I don't even know the way Mentor Ray works. Moving on. So you can just click on diffuse here and drag it out. Um, and if you haven't used slate a lot, if whenever you click on a node that has nothing attached to it and you drag out blank, when you let go, it's going to give you all the things that go into that slot, like all the possible material types. So I'm going to go standard bitmap, and there's my image, open sesame. All right, now uh, just take both of these, and this is a little apply button, so apply both of them. Two problems why you don't see it. First is we're in wireframe view. So I'm going to press F3 to toggle shade it on. You still don't see it though, because you have to come up here and you have to show standard map in viewport. All right, so it's going to think about it, and then it's going to apply it. All right, there you go. We're done, right? No, wrong. Uh, the problem you're going to run into is when you're modeling, um, a lot of times you want to model in wireframe mode. It's a lot easier for grabbing verts, moving stuff around, grabbing whole rings, etc. So when you toggle back and forth in your geometry modes, your viewport, your view planes are changing too. I tap J to get rid of those little brackets. I hate them. I grew up on Maya, I guess, and I I never needed them, so they irritate me in max. Um, moving right along. All right, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to leave uh, this guy on the default layer. I'm going to open the layer manager right here. All right, and so he's already on the default layer. So is the second one. Now, and what we're going to do is we're going to grab this guy. I just opened the object properties there real quick. Um, out of force of habit. So we're going to grab the second one. I'm going to click this button to create a new layer that he's already on. And we're going to name that image planes. Planes because a lot of times you're going to be using more than just a single image. You might have a front view or a top view or whatever to go along with it. Okay? Uh, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to change the rendering based on the layer, right? So before I blow your mind, let me just show you. Uh, I'm going to go to the layer properties here. And for this layer, the display, instead of it matching the viewport, I want everything on this layer to be shaded. Also, when I freeze things, I don't want them to be shown in gray because I want everything on this layer to be frozen. 
right? Now you'll see that when I changed layer properties, that sucker froze. And the reason it did that is because the object in its object properties has to also be set so that the display properties are not controlled by object, but rather by layer. And so this should be changing back, just like that. All right, so now we come over here, and if I tap F3 again, the one that's on the default layer goes to wireframe, but this one here stays as it is. And so by just using layers that have specific layer properties assigned to them, you can change all sorts of useful things. Um, like the, the two main ones I showed you there is like how to have something like frozen. Like I can't interact with this thing right now because it's on this layer. Like uh, as much as I want to move it around and select it, whatever I can't, which is great for image plans. Anything else that you don't want to fool with in your scene, it's just frozen just by adding it to this layer. But you can still see what's going on there. Also, the obvious rendering one. Um, you can get a lot fancier with uh, rendering tricks by changing the layer properties because there's rendering control also. For example, if you wanted to multi passes and you wanted certain things to be rendered out separately. This is the easiest way rather than going and setting up complex stuff in the actual render dialog. If I just got quick things that I'm going to comp together, this is where I do it. Alright, hopefully uh, some of those tips will be useful. Um, Alright, until I get a bug to record another one, there you go.